Hey Spartans, today we're here with Miss Jenny Griner. She is uh, one of our art teachers. Miss Griner, tell us, uh, tell us about yourself. Hi guys, um, I hope you all are doing well and taking care of yourself. Um, this is definitely a different situation that we're all in now. Um, I've been teaching, this is my 24th year teaching and this is by far not like anything that we've ever experienced before. So um, yeah, I know we're all kind of building the plane while we're flying it, trying to figure out what to do from one moment to the next. But I hope you guys are doing okay and, and hanging in there and doing what needs to be done and reaching out to all your teachers whenever you have a question about anything or a concern because, you know, that's what we're here for. and We're trying to figure it out right along with you guys. That's perfect. Um, so, Ms. Griner, tell us, how long have you been teaching art? I have been teaching. Like I said, this is my 24th year. Um, teaching. I spent my first five years teaching at a private school in Savannah. Okay. Uh, and then after that, I went back to my high school that I had graduated from, and I was there for seven years in, in Bullitt County, right, right by Georgia Southern University. Um, and then after I left there, I moved up here in 2009, and I spent a decade in Gwinnett County, and now I have landed in um, Hall County at West Hall High School. West Hall, best hall. That, you're exactly right. And, <laughs> and we need to preach that to the world. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> so as an artist, I don't know if this is the case, uh, but most artists, I would assume, specialize. What is your specialty as far as art goes? Um, I love mixed media. I love experimenting with different things. Um, Tell us a little bit about, like, explain like I'm five. Okay. Tell me what mixed media is. I will show you. Oh, so perfect. This is something I started working on um, last week. It's my little spread about the coronavirus. Oh, wow. I and saw so, that on Instagram. That's yeah. Really and cool. so what I've been doing is trying to see what kind of materials are just around that are not traditional art materials that I could build up with. So I started out because I'm a, a coffee holic. Morning. Nice. Um, <laughs> so I started out obviously just painting with coffee to see what that would do and actually experimented a little bit with regular coffee. And then I have espressos. Espressos are much darker. So I was getting different values with those. And then I was like, well, what happens if I pull weeds out of the ground and muddle them up with water? And so I got some really, they don't turn out green, they turn out a different color brown. Ah. Uh -huh. Walked around and pulled dandelion heads off of flowers and got some some kind of yellowy tints. And now I'm experimenting with different um, petals off of flowers. So all of these really pretty purples that you see, um, uh -huh. some red tulips in my neighbor's yard, and they were dying. So I pulled the petals off the tulips and muddled those up and ended up with some really pretty purples. Oh, that is super cool. Like, so I'm glad that we clarified that because in my head I was like, oh, okay, mixed media. So like charcoals and pens and watercolor. And you yeah. can do that. You can mix up anything. So I've got one of the assignments that one of my classes is working on right now is just experimenting with mediums that you wouldn't traditionally think go together. Right. So, you know, people are used to doing watercolor washes and then drawing on top of them with pen. You know, what if you melt crayons and then try to draw on top of those? What happens? And so oh, that's it's cool. Like that. So it's just the, the whole experimentation process. Absolutely. I mean, uh, it moves, it, it moves the art forward. Um, so in the current era, um, how important do you think creativity is both for art and for an uh, outside of the art realm? Well, right now, um, probably more so than, any other time, anytime there's a time of conflict, anytime there's anything going on, you have a huge um, outpouring of creativity. So we have already been seeing that even the week before, you know, they closed the schools here in Georgia, all of the art museums around the world were already, you know, posting free stuff. Here's the best museums to have your students visit virtually. They were setting up all these new things. Um, there were things coming out online. So you have like your 30 day drawing challenge off this like Inktober. And so there's um, 30 days of drawing or doodles or whatever for during COVID-19. And so it's different things like patience and exploration, stuff like that. And so you do things to narrow it. And so it, it is a way to kind of accept or, or rationalize, or I guess 
personally kind of get into a headspace to understand what's going on and cope with it. So it's a big coping mechanism. Um, but then also too, um, one of the things I always teach to my students is that as artists, any of the fine arts, whether we're musicians or writers or visual artists, um, it's kind of our responsibility as artists to document our now. So from our perspective, not what you read in the history books, but from our personal perspective, what does this look like? What does it look like to, because what it looks like to me is not what it's going to look like to somebody in China or in Spain right now or Italy. But in the history books, they're going to document what happened and tell you stories, but things don't really take on a reality until you see them visually. It's like I tell my students, you read about the Holocaust in your history books and you're like, yes, this happened. Then you go watch Schindler's List and you're like, oh my gosh, this happened. And so it's right. a whole thing. So that's kind of, you know, not only is art a very good coping me mechanism, um, it also is a very important way for us to document what our society looks like right now for future generations. Wow, that's that might be the most powerful thing anybody's ever put on uh, on our news program. That's <laughs> that's super deep. I didn't even put art as far as just part of the historical, you know, roadmap of documenting the things that the populace sees and and that stuff. That's super cool. Well, um, that's like um, the the town of Gornica. You don't yeah. really hear about Gornica in your history books. And so nobody would know this little town existed if it wasn't for Picasso's painting of, of the tragedies of Gornica. Gornica. Wow. Um, so to springboard from that, then how have you seen fine art helping in this kind of time? So that we're documenting it, obviously. How right. are we using that fine art to provide peace and comfort to folks? Well, to me, the fine arts too, like I said, are all encompassing. So it's your writers. And so there's so many poems and stuff coming out that I'm reading that I'm reading. Um, even like I have enjoyed watching on our feeds, you and Dr. Hathcock and the bands playing every night. So it's, it's kind of like artists, it soothes the soul. Um, the, I don't, I'm sure most of us probably watched it, but the living room concerts the other night. Hosted oh man. By yeah. It was incredible. Absolutely yeah. We, we like shut the house down, pop popcorn, and it was like we were at a concert. We sat and watched the whole thing. I did VR, I've watched it twice since then. Love Dave Grohl, and he was on there, so I wasn't missing it. But it, right. was, it was incredible. And so, and you know, it's little things like that. So not only was that an event, a fine arts event, that was organized to kind of help people make them realize we're not out here by ourselves. Everybody's in this together give you an hour to just engulf yourself in the music and, and separate from what else is going on right now. But also they used it as a way to raise funds to help combat some of the issues the world is facing right now with this, especially, you know, with even stuff we're seeing around here with trying to make sure that families and children get meals and get, you know, medical help and taking care of our first responders and stuff like that. So that's one way that it's happening. Um, I do know just from my news feed and the stuff that I follow, and we actually have started up a every Monday night, um, there's a group of artists and art teachers that get together for a Zoom meeting. And it's teachers from pretty much every region of Georgia, from the Carolinas, we've got a few in there that are out from Colorado and California with us. And it's a chance for us all just to kind of sit, um, connect, with each other, talk about the art we're making, tell stories from the week and stuff like that. And so I think once all of this is over, um, not only does that give us, all of us across our country, a chance to connect and share our art and where our art is going during this time, but it's going to actually end up being, when it's over, all of those artworks that have become sort of a, a mental collaboration. Right. To be out there. Well, that, I mean, that's super cool. We've got a similar thing for the uh, broadcast film uh, teachers out there. It's just a Facebook group. We don't meet and like, we don't, I wish we, that'd be really neat if we had some sort of collaborative piece to like say at the end of all this, we've got it done. So that's super cool. I can't wait to see that, but we do, it's like a more of a support 
kind of situation. It's like, Hey, I need an idea for this. And right now everybody is like, okay, we're stressing out. What do we do to continue <laughs> teaching this? So is it, who has ideas? Um, yeah. So West Hall art, um, the art studio. West they Hall are doing, High School Art rocks. West Hall High School <laughs> Art does rock. Um, so they are doing something to help out in the same kind of vein. They're putting out their creations. Tell us right. a little bit about the West Hall Virtual Art Gallery. Um, is it okay if I do a screen share real quick? Sure. Okay. So um, what we have done is we kind of got in the habits. Um, uh, I think you have to allow. Oh, I got to allow you. Hang on. Yeah. Right there. This is live TV, folks. Yeah, like, we're making it up as we go. A co-host. There we go. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's see if it'll do it now. Oh yeah, here we go. All right. So what we have been doing is we had That's got your screen or my screen? in the there habit go. of sharing um, our artwork around the school. And since we're not at school right now to be able to do that, we did still want that to be out there, one, so that, you know, our art students can share their creativity with everybody else. But two, whenever West Hall Spartans need a little break and to go, you know, just kind of relax and, and look at artwork, um, we've started building this kind of online gallery. So as they're finishing pieces um, during the time that we're learning from home, we're taking and pulling those and posting them. So photography right now, one of the things they're doing, their first week was just, you know, practicing their composition skills. Right. What we got into now is they are actually documenting their day. They're documenting their time in quarantine. So whether they're out getting, going for walks or they're staring out their window on a rainy day or they're spending all of their time. Right. <laughs> doing schoolwork trying to find art supplies I love this one you know just <laughs> depending on what it is so they're they're doing that they're documenting you know the, this life in quarantine so as they get them done you know we're we're posting them up um there's some other wonderful things projects they're continuing to work on from when we were in school and stuff like that too um so we've put together this this little gallery that we're constantly adding to we added a bunch of stuff to it um just this past weekend this is one of those where they're trying to find materials from around their house to create artwork with. So it's like found the materials and then found tools to actually add or apply the mediums with. Um, so yeah, we put together this cool little, this little virtual gallery just so that people can um, still enjoy the art that they got used to seeing around the school. It's just in a little bit of a different format now. That's spectacular. Now, is this yeah. something that you're wanting, like, is this something y'all will continue after uh, this is all kind so. of crazy and this is over? Yeah, we had actually started putting this website together before. And so it was just, it was going to be like a traditional high school website for our department, for the visual arts specifically, that was just a little bit about us, the calendars on there. So they know what's going on. There's courses, a little bit about NHS and stuff like that. And so it was going to be just a traditional website, but this kind of, you know, situation being what it is, I just thought about it one night. I'm like, how can I get this artwork out there? You know, we post it to social media, but to where it, it's kind of a, a show because our spring shows are getting canceled. We're not going to be able to do our IB exit show. We're not going to be able to do our senior exit show. We're not going to have our big spring art show that we were planning. So we're just going to put it all here. Awesome. Kind of well, and I think now that it started, it'll probably live on after this. Absolutely. I mean, there's some, there's some beautiful uh, art and photography up there. Um, well, this is great. Uh, Ms. Griner, we really appreciate you um, being with us today. And oh, thank you. Um, as always, uh, from one Spartan to the other, uh, you've been awesome and we appreciate you being with us. I appreciate it so much, guys. Y'all take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Remember, if depending on what you're into, if you like <laughs> music, Jolene, the chorus of Jolene is 20 seconds. There you go. Dave Grohl and the Foo Fighters sing the chorus to Hero, 20 seconds, and your hands are all clean. Y'all take care, guys. Did you